Yo, Mark D'Antonio retired. We gotta talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up, time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh <laughs> What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step note. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. I thought it was college football related. Sports related, we have a good time today. We have to talk about the breaking news as of this video, which is Michigan State Spartans head coach Mark D'Antonio decided, I'm out, you. After 13 seasons as a head coach, 114 wins, best in program history, took the Michigan State Spartans to the college football playoff in a blip in history. I don't know how we let that happen. But it's been real tough sledding for him the last few years, so much so that, well, it's one thing to suck on the field. And I'm not saying they suck on the field, but they ain't been great on the field, right? Especially in the Big Ten where they're expected to compete with Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, and the like, right? Say nothing of Minnesota coming out of nowhere, you know? Like, I mean, Macho Man Cole, you're going nowhere! And, you know, you know the Spider-Man we can talk about with Tobey Maguire. Anyway, Mark D'Antonio stepping down after two weeks ago, my man signed a retention bonus of $4.3 million, right? And he's stepping down the day before signing day and hours before a report and allegations are released that shows my man's got caught lying about multiple NCAA recruiting violations leveled at him first by Curtis Blackwell. Among them, that he took Blackwell with him on a recruiting visit or an in-home, which you cannot do to see an unknown, unnamed five-star recruit in the metro Detroit area. All of you can figure out who that is. But that's just the tip of this iceberg. And it is a massively big iceberg that I thought was going to come down on the skull of Mark D'Antonio last year. Like in November, December. Because people were talking about Alec Grinch might be up for that job. And your man Luke Fickle at Cincinnati might be up for that job. And that's actually where I want to take this conversation a little bit. But this retirement does not at all feel like the kind in which Mark D'Antonio wanted it to happen this way. I know the social media and everything is like, yeah, we, were, we appreciate him retiring. We appreciate everything that Mark D'Antonio has done for us, making it to the college football playoff and whoop de whoop The timing of this, the timing of this stinks to high heaven. Why? Because one, as I mentioned, my man signed a bonus for staying two weeks ago and, you know, collect your loot, collect your money. But he also told everybody he fully planned on being the head coach when they start their season against, like, Northwestern in, in 2020. And he had reshuffled the, chef, the staff, and they were going to take a new direction, and whoop de whoop and have to have. But what do we see? We saw Michigan State has been embroiled in scandal, dog, and it's been getting at the football program in a way in which you could see that Mark D'Antonio had, one, spread himself a little too thin, and two, was too afraid to let his staff members go. So he just kind of repositioned them and thought that nobody would notice that you moved the offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, and tight ends coach, defensive ends coach, whatever the hell, the hell it is he did because it didn't really matter and it didn't really help. I mean, they got shafted in the Arizona State game. It turned out Arizona State was good. And they just weren't that good, right? There are other games that you could take care of your business. Like they beat the hell out of my alma mater, Tulsa. I remember that. Phil Montgomery sees single high coverage, keeps running the ball straight at that in front that is one of the best in football, and that's what we all expected Mark D'Antonio to lean on, right? They've been outstanding defensively for a very long time. It's very hard to run the football on a Michigan State defense Mark D'Antonio as the head coach. Steely-eyed, steely glared, that sort of dude. But he also was one of these guys that seemed to just want to be secluded in his football office and not do a whole hell of a lot outside of that. I get it. Football coaches want to be football coaches. They don't want to be fundraisers. They don't want to hobnob with the high-powered donors until they do. And that's one of the other ways in which he got in trouble. A couple dudes that got, or, or parents of a couple dudes he gave jobs to whose names are on the front of some buildings on campus, and that's a no-no. And then you got to do Curtis Blackwell and his attorneys doing some unorthodox stuff in the courtroom, leveling allegations and whatnot. And then you got the NCAA getting involved in a degree, to a degree to where... Michigan State I probably came to the market and was like, look, this is untenable. We got to cut bait. We got to start new. So they let him retire a few hours before this news gets out here. We're going to find out so much more that is going on here. But I want to get on top of this talk about what you should be thinking about, which is timing. And then who's up for this job, right? Because we thought that the coaching carousel was done. 
And I thought the wildest thing we were going to see was Rocky Long deciding to step down as the head coach of San Diego State after what I thought was going pretty well to become the defense coordinator of New Mexico. Okay, nope, I was wrong. It's Mark D'Antonio retiring, in quotes, the day before signing day. And now we got to talk about Luke Fickle, who did a damn good job at Cincinnati, being up for perhaps that job at Michigan State for what he was able to do at Cincinnati, what he was able to do at Ohio State and his knowledge of the area. We also need to talk about Alex Grinch at Oklahoma and how he might be a fit. Now, you might say that a man needed to do a couple more years at Oklahoma and get going in the right direction. He's already turned down one job opportunity like Washington State. But Washington State ain't Michigan State. All right? If you think that you can go back near home, because he's from Grove City in Ohio, and recruit the area and put together a staff, and then you have what you need to try to make this thing sink, right? I bet if Dave Miranda had to do it all over again, he'd probably take the Michigan State job. Just saying, right? Now there's a bunch of guys that just got head coaching jobs, that just became coordinators, that are really going to be looking at this job going, hmm, I wonder if I could be the one to knock off Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan. Maybe I'm the one to take the scalp of Wisconsin. Maybe not, right? Be very careful about what you wish for as a head coach in the Big Ten, because that's Ohio State's conference until further notice, right? There's a couple other folks that I think could be up for this job that should be giving it a hard look, but the ones that I really, 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 really don't want to move, or I think they're in a good situation, guys like Mike Norvell, I think it's a good situation for Florida State. I think he's got a head in the right direction. Already picked up Chuba Purdy. I think Chuba Purdy's going to be real good. Another guy that I think is going to get some sniffs for this head coaching job, probably should stay put, Graham Harrell, USC offensive coordinator. He already turned down being offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. He already turned down being offensive coordinator for Texas. If you want to run a little bit more of a wide-open scheme in a conference where the only the most wide-open scheme we see is perhaps Minnesota and Ohio State, yeah, perhaps give that a look. Jim Litter at Wisconsin, that's the dude, right? That is who I would set my sights on if I am Michigan State. I wouldn't go for an offensive-minded head coach uh, or, or a, a defensive-minded head coach. I would go for a defensive-minded head coach. I would go for a coordinator who has shown you that he could put together outstanding defenses and then let him go hire a rising star at offensive coordinator. It's too easy for us to go and get an offensive coordinator and then know how to actually pay attention to the defense. I, 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 but, on the other hand, I think that Jim Leonard is also pretty good as a CEO because I'm kind of on this tip right now where I feel like you need a guy who wants to put down his play card and be a head coach if you're going to win a national championship. And Michigan State is far from wanting to win a I mean, everybody wants to win a national championship, but they can't reasonably believe they're going to win a national championship in the next three, four years. they got to build to that. First, you got to win your division. <laughs> and then you got to win your conference. And that is no easy win. Right now, shoot for the division, hope for the Rose Bowl, let things fall into place. But I am fascinated by this news, and I can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments about Mark D'Antonio choosing to retire, in quotes, the day before signing day after picking up his $4.3 million bonus just two weeks ago. All right, that's it for me.